talk about the mothership, about this thing right here. So, um, XTS, Exact Tone Solutions here in Nashville. These guys are great. They're, they're great. Barry and, and Greg, all those guys, man. Um, they built, I've got three boards that they've built for me of, of various kind of sizes. My main A-Rig board that they built for me, I had it for, I do think it was 10 years solid without ever tweaking it, like hmm. without ever changing anything on it. It was always the way. Impressive, because it's, yeah. it's hard not to change it, yeah. right? And, um, <laughs> and I just kind of, there were a couple things I wanted to change. Well, really, this kind of amp switching thing was the biggest, that was actually the okay. litmus for. Yeah, let's hear how you're doing that. That's a good. So they were the one, so I went to those guys and said, hey, this is what I would like to do. Can you help me figure out what the best way to, to accomplish this is and they as they do they asked me you know a hundred questions and 50 of them i had never considered and i'm like oh i'm really glad you asked me that because <laughs> yeah. yeah that would be important to me and <laughs> and you know they talked me into going to this switching rig so this is the gig rig g3 is the company sure um and I had always been really hesitant to do any kind of switching system like this. I was always a guy that just had a pedal board. Right. Um, and in fact, my other two boards don't have any switching on. They're much smaller. But they explained how it was going to work and the layout of it. And I was like, okay, that's, I'm cool with that. One of the things I like most about it is that there's just not a lot of like hidden screen menus. Yeah. It's all still pretty tactile, which I like. Um, but case in point, that was the you know, the reasoning for, well, I guess it's, let's do this new board so I can get all this switching figured out. And then it was like, well, and I do have a couple of these other pedals I've kind of been, I'd always been keeping on the side and can we just implement it all and can we, and, and again, you look at this big stupid thing and you go, you know, it's like it should be able to, you know, land the space shuttle. <laughs> this is just such a, you know, it's a luxury and I'm aware of that. And, you know, this, my, Cartage guys, God bless them, Richie and all the dudes at Soundcheck, and they they set me up. They get all this stuff to where I need to be to work, and I would have never built something like this if I was trying to put it in my car or whatever. You yeah, just, right. You just go no. In fact, it literally this doesn't even have like a case. It goes inside of one of my trunks, and so just that sort of thing. But um, the um, the 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 switching thing was really great, and they you know the exact tone guys are really great about doing. Um, custom interfaces is a big part of what they do and so I've got an interface on the front here that has really three amp outlines it's got a you know what I kind of call amp one and two yeah and then it's got a third line um, that um, the intention there is sometimes I'm tracking a guitar part and the cabinets in the closet or it's you know in another location and it's mic'd up um, but it's cool to have a, an amp in the room with you because oh, like yeah. for feedback or whatever, or sometimes you can turn on the drum room mics and you get a cool room sound. So basically what that enables me to do is I can flip on a combo in the room and send an extra signal to that amp and it doesn't change anything about oh. the, the main signal going to my main, the, you know, really the meat of the guitar sound, yeah. right? Um, and so... So, you know, again, w via switching, I can, you know, I could, I could be running all three at once, but I, the way I use it the is kind of... Engineers love that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got it. Um, well, it did. When I got this, when I kind of did this thing, you know, even, even me after years of being in town, the first couple times I rolled into studios and I was like, hey, here's what we're going to do. And a couple of the engineers were like, uh, uh okay, <laughs> well, why? And I was like, man, just... It, it, it'll make sense like yeah. once you see me do it a couple times and then you know, and it, you know yeah not that it was like some groundbreaking idea but the implementation of of it as a new workflow was different for, sure. for all of us yeah and I was getting used to the switcher and everything um, but so yeah they, they built that interface and then all the pedals run into this switcher and you can you know basically just kind of set scenes um, and you know it, the so this will the one switch I can swap any combination of the amps themselves and the pedals, um, and so that's a you know that's that's how I use it. Yeah. And um, and, uh, and man, again, days. You know the session I was on today for for, for Marin Morris. It was like a lot of the sounds were really organic, and I didn't do any switching. I kind of used. In fact, I played the Tweed Deluxe all day. 
Oh, really? And I didn't really do a lot of switching. I switched guitars around, but it was kind of like, it was all needed to be kind of rootsy guitar. And yeah. that's what it called for. And I didn't do a bunch of big scene changes and stuff, but on the days when it's called for, you know, I, it was just nothing like the old times when you, I'm trying to like step on three pedals going into the verse. <laughs> right, um, while you're reading the chart. And, yeah, uh, oh, there's that too, yeah. there's, there's yeah. that too. Um, but, but really thankful for the XTS guys. They've, they've, they've thought of and solved problems before they're ever problems for me, so. Well, take us through it, like boot to bonnet, what's all on here yeah was. um so uh yeah so i'll just go on this top row yeah trusty rusty line six m9 oh, i'm man. a huge everybody has one anybody yeah i mean anybody <laughs> that knows me knows and it, you know I've, i i get these questions i've said this on other interviews like do you have it modded you no it's the stock one I, you know i've yeah. got like four of these it's it they're great they're awesome they sound great. I've used this thing on more records than I can imagine, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I specifically use the reverbs a lot. Um, there's a couple cool fuzz patches on there, um, huh. and um, uh, I've used a lot of the the mods and filter stuff. It's it's just a really great pedal, and it's impossible to get that much stuff. You know, even on a board like this, the the kind of bang for real estate buck right. that you get out of that is unbeatable. Yeah, I've done gigs where I've just taken that. <laughs> like I've walked in with a, a line six and a combo amp, and and, and, yeah. and it's great. Yeah. So, um, and I'll I'll come back to this thing in the middle here. I've got my timeline, Strymon timeline delay, and Strymon Mobius, and I use those exactly how you'd think delays and modulations. And I just think those pedals sound great. I like the way they work. They're 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 great. Um, this thing in the middle. Um, yeah, what's that weird? Yeah, though? it's so it's called the uh, Mission Expressionator, and it's attached to an expression pedal here. And what this does is it allows me to control any one of these three pedals, or any combination of those pedals with the one expression pedal. Oh, well, that's really clever. Yeah, so if I am wanting to, to, to tweak, you know, if I want to use it for delays, which I do a lot, you know, it's set there, and then this is the Mobius, and then this is the M9, and then if I want to tweak, like, the, 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 the delay and, you know, open a filter on this at the same time, you just can kind of select a secondary one, or you can select all of them. That's um, a great idea. Yeah, and so... Um, so again, it was kind of a space-saving maneuver, uh, uh, but you know, because I would sometimes, uh, you know, I'll use Waz in this and the M9. I'll use, again, I talk about filter sweep stuff where I was doing delay gags with the expression pedal there, and then I've kind of moved on and use, you know, use it for all three of these for different different reasons. Sometimes you want to lengthen a delay trail, and you also want to turn modulation up on the Mobius, and you can kind of set all those parameters it takes a, a fair amount of tweaking yeah um but i did kind of did a lot of that stuff so long ago I, I mean i'll give you an example so like the delay this is a thing that i do a lot is um let me see here oh so i've got like a little slap back delay on here right um and then way i've got it set right now is i can control the mix and the the repeats with the delay pedal so I can whoa right so you can go so that with it with it you know that's the that's the setting I have saved yeah. but I could also go or I oh, can go yeah. And then the other cool thing, you know, that I can do sometimes when I'm playing slide is like, you know, you can control the, the trail. So you're. I also use it as a kind of a live blend because I sometimes just get in the exact right, you know, delay kind of thing on a track. I'm gonna turn the tremolo off on this amp, but like, so again, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, the sound I've got. Yeah. But I can go. Yeah, 
so I can control all that stuff with my foot. You know, it's interesting that you have the heel down. I know brings it's it up, and then your volume is heels deep. So let me tell you why I do it that way. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Because counterintuitive. It's completely counterintuitive, and I've done it this way for years and years and years and years and years. And it's because when it was in the when I had it the traditional way. Yeah. You feel like you're so, falling forward. Well, sometimes the <laughs> no, it had nothing to do with me. Sometimes the drummer or whatever, you get rocking in the room and the pedal would just start to fall. Right. And then the delays and stuff would get out of hand. And so I just decided that I want the off position to always be down. Great idea. Because those, in those, because it's kind of idiot proof. Right. In those Dunlops, I find the longer I play them, they lose all that res uh, yeah. resistance. And, and I mean, so many pedals do. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just attrition of yeah. plastic so, so, and metal. So for, for me, it was always just kind of like, the idea of, and I'll do, again, we're doing this stuff fast, and just for the idea of it just being like, it's off. Yeah. Like, that was always the way, and again, so yeah, it's very, you know, if you watch me do this with my feet, <laughs> it, it's like you're flying a helicopter. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, right. but I've done it, I've done it this way for so long um, that it, it, it's just ingrained, it's, it's just ingrained in, in my brain the way it works, you know, so. Yeah. Um, in fact, when they rebuilt this pedal, they, they the pedal board, they were like, do you hey, want it like that? Yeah, they literally said that. I go, yep, don't change it. Don't, don't yeah. leave it exactly how it is because they would mess my brain up. To yeah, that. that's funny. Uh, okay, so pedals. Yeah, okay. Next, okay, micro synth. Here's a funny story. Okay, from your old, from old Wheezy here. Yeah. Okay, I bought this pedal because I wanted to, thought it would be cool. Tried it out at my, I bought it online. Tried it at my house. Thought it's cool. I'll, I'll use this. Yeah. Um, I'd had a pog on my board for years and was just kind of like, I um, feel like I've done everything I can do with this pedal. I'm mix it up, you know. Yeah. Had him put it on this board. It worked for one day and it's, it doesn't even work. It's, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it won't pass signal when it's on. So that I, it literally, I, I have never used this pedal. Okay, on like a session. harmonics, if you're listening, Send this man a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, the good thing is, is the footprint of these pedals, I could certainly swap it out for some other stuff, but by the time, and I couldn't return it because they had already, it's got Velcro on it and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, all right. Yeah. So I, It looks so good. It looks awesome. <laughs> it, it sounded awesome for about a day, for yeah. about three hours. It sounded awesome. So that's it. Um, Peterson Strobo Tuner. Just the best tuners ever. Sure, I, I, love I, I'm, them. I'm, I'm a big, big fan. Did you ever use any of their sweetening stuff? I never did. I, that's that was one Pandora's box. I just thought better left. Sure. <laughs> it's got, you know, in in, uh, in uh, Spinal Tap when they're like, police said best leave that unsolved. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was kind of how I felt about that. I, yeah. I fight tuning enough. I don't need to get into any extra. Yeah. Right. It's its own thing. Yeah, let 440 be 440. <laughs> At least for me, you know. Um, MXR uh, Bass Compressor. I think they've actually renamed these now. Oh, really? Um, but when I got this thing years and years and years ago, you know, it was kind of pitched to me as like, this is their version of an 1176 in a box, yeah. um, which we all know is not true. But this is a really transparent really really clean sounding what i would call a you know studio an outboard gear style compressor sure we, well we, and it, it never you're nothing and i think it's been have you been running this much here because i had nothing to sound compressed no it's not it's i mean no i haven't had it in the chain okay. at all um, so that's really transparent well it is though <laughs> um and it's uh uh because here i mean i will show you it, it is really transparent <laughs> reduction a little bit. Because with humbuckers, I don't like humbuckers with compressors, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's, and all. I've got it set subtly. And, and again, it's all usage, right? Like there are times when like the, you know, I've got a real red Dynacomp out there in my drawer. It's like when you want that sound right. or that thing, or even like the Brent Mason, the, the Boss Blue, like yeah. when you're going for a thing, those are all great. Yeah. But in the kind of universal usage, 
you know, thing, that has always been really effective for me. Yeah. And again, I think they, I for years was telling them, I was like, you know how many of these you'd sell if you just didn't call it a bass compressor? Because nobody, <laughs> right. but right. anyways, that's, that's a thing. Um, uh, this, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. This Tilt Overdrive yeah, right, by Rev, tilt. my buddy Sean Tubbs, everybody knows how great that guy is. Yeah, and great. We met Tour and he was in Karen Underwood's band. I was playing for Josh years ago. And, you know, Sean is not a self-promoter and he's never the kind of guy to, you know, hype himself. And so when he, rarely when he calls me, he's like, hey, I got something I think you should check out. I'm like, dude, yeah. What, you know, <laughs> just here's my credit card. Send it yeah. to you. Know. But, man, I was just really blown away with how this Overdrive sounds. And... And when I had this board built, I specifically built it to have it right here at my foot because I love the boost so much. And I wanted access to um, to just be able to hit that boost whenever I wanted to right here. And the, the overdrive sounds great, but it's just a really great sounding um, pedal. It's, it's actually the one, this whole time when I've been kicking on overdrive, that's what I've been doing. And, um, and it's a... Uh, And this, the EQ stuff is also cool. I mean, you can get into. Yeah, that's I would say like, pe like pedals like this, like you, you kind of can't make it sound bad. You can make it sound different, but. And then you put the boost on. So I love that pedal. John yeah. outdid himself. Um, really, really great. Uh, Boss volume pedal. Um, I always used the Dunlop volume pedal. When we built this board, I, I kind of had to switch to the Boss because I needed more outputs. And it's taken some getting used to. I was traumatized for <laughs> about a month, but now, now I'm, I'm used to it. I've got it, got it figured out. Um, trusty Rusty RC booster, all just a classic boost. Uh, we're kind of in gain stage world, right? RC booster, the exact XTS Winford overdrive, which I love. Uh, an Ibanez Mo distortion, which has been rehoused because uh, those old switches suck. And then I've got a couple EQ pedals um, with just different. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. With the with the XDS. Yeah, and and they uh, one of these is their standard kind of mod that they sell, and then I, there's one that I had that kind of got some more specific frequencies that they did for me. Do you ever run them at the same both at the same time? Um, rarely. Yeah. It has happened. Um, it mostly came from I wanted independent EQs for the two different amps. Sure. Um, and, uh, but they, but they do have a, there's a couple key frequencies that make me go to one or another, depending on, on some, some different things. But, but again, that we're, we're back to this, like, you know, when we're, when you're in a dense kind of recording and there's this harmonic battle, you know, what you, what you kind of right. learn after years of making records is like everything can't sound huge. Yeah. Right. right. And as a guitar player, you know, when you're coming up, the worst thing somebody can say is like, his tone's thin, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, you're just devastated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the, re the reality is you can't, you know, when you, when you play on a ton of records, like everything can't be huge. Everything yeah. can't be louder than everything else. Right. And sometimes, you know, you're in a supportive space and you, you're trying to find this, this right part to speak in the chorus a certain way. And certainly with great engineers, they can do a lot of stuff to help on their end. But, but sometimes just like knocking a little bit of extra bottom end off of a tone or rolling a little bit of top end off or boosting a little bit of, you know, some of the mid-range frequencies like small moves can get you, and also the way that your amp and the tubes and the speakers all react to that stuff. Again, to the, the earlier conversation is like, the, the EQ moves done pre the amp will sound different and respond different than the EQ moves done after the mic. Right. You know, and sometimes it needs to happen there and sometimes it needs to happen here. Sometimes it's both. Yeah, um, but if you can give the engineer something right, Ideally, they won't have to do anything. That, I mean, that, that, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like that's the you, you. I just am trying to get people as close to the 
finished product as I can. Right, right. And then, you know, I'll take all the help I can get from that side of yeah. the board, but I want the starting source to be, you know, I'm trying to help us, you know, troubleshoot. So. Right, rather than say, you guys fix it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we already talked about my expression pedal. And yeah, then this, and then this, this weirdo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is this weirdo? The, um, the XP-1000. Uh, this is a, a weird internet relic. I, I, I think you can find them. I, 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 it was hard for me to source this one when I sourced it. I, I only know one other guy that has one. Um, but essentially, there were a line of Digitech pedals that they made that, you know, ranged from, you know, there was the old original Whammy pedal. There was one that was all of their, like, cool reverbs. There was yeah. one that was a lot of their modulations and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And the, a couple people figured out that if you bought one specific model, you could mod it to do all of them. So this pedal has been, I think it's on, it's been modded to, um, with an extra switch and some other things so that it can do uh, all kinds of stuff. Let me see how I get it on here. Well, now it's, oh, I gotta turn it on. Yeah, there we go. Um, so like this, you know, I've got, it can do wop. Um, it can do um, cool, uh, I think this is like modulation stuff. Yeah, Leslie. And in this thing, you can tell the pedal like controls the speed of the Leslie. Right? Um, and then there's a reverb one and there's some other stuff and you can get to the old whammy stuff. But again, just kind of a big bang for your, bang for your buck pedal. Um, there's like three or four sounds on there that are just like super rad that it would be worth having just for those. Yeah. But it does so much stuff and there's so many cool things on this. The hardest part is just remembering where everything is. Right. <laughs> just, yeah. It's, it's, it's number three and it's, it's setting 32 um, and kind of scrolling up and down in the banks is a pain in the ass. Yeah, that's too. more like an overdub. Give me a minute. Dig, <laughs> yes. <laughs> dig around. Yes. Or you just have like your handful of go-tos, you know. So. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, that's the whole, I think that's everything. I think I covered all of this. Yeah, well, Derek, this has really, really been uh, fun and educational. And I think this guy, say the name of that again. Um, I believe the company's called Mission, um, and it's, it's called an Expressionator. Expressionator. Is the, is the thing. Um, yeah, and there's a couple other dudes I've seen that have it. You know, it's certainly not proprietary. Um, that's, I've never seen, that's such a great idea, man. Man, I, the XTS guy, again, that's one of those where, you know, those dudes at, at XTS, when you go to them and you're like, I want to be able to do this and this and this. And they're, they're like, okay, let me think. Have you heard of one of these? Or they'll yeah. say, well, we can wire it this way. Or, you know, that's the, the beauty of going to pros like that is they've just built so many rigs at this point. They, they know all the pain points and all the, yeah. you know, and again, they'll bring up stuff like, well, would you ever want to be able to run this while you run it? And I go, oh yeah, I would yeah. definitely need to do that. And you're like, yep, yeah, okay, we got you. We'll That's it. great. So they're, they're awesome.